Welcome to the celebration of St. James School at this special Sunday service. I'm Stacy Irvin. I'm honored to be here as your head of school as we continue to serve students from the earliest preschool age up through grade five. As we've done in years past on this school Sunday, today we will share with you the excitement of our school and invite you to join us following the church service for our open house to visit our classrooms. But this year we will also share with you the true connection of our church and our school. And we'll ask each of you as you leave today to think about the importance of this connection and what it holds for the future of our community. We've been so lucky over the years to have such a dedicated faculty and staff, supportive parents, grandparents, and pretty terrific students. Right now, I'd like to introduce one of those faculty members and parishioners, Lori Working, to share with you her thoughts on the connection of church and school. connectedness as having useful social, professional, or commercial relationships. My relationship with St. James Church and School certainly meets those criteria. For me, the school and church are places that I socialize. The building is useful to me as a place of worship. I hold a job as a teacher at the school, so it's professional and commercial. But I can honestly say that my husband and I began attending church here at St. James 11 years ago because we didn't have the kind of connection we were seeking in the church that we attended at the time. And if I could write the definition of connectedness to correlate with how my family and I feel about St. James, it would be totally different. It would be about relationships, love, service, and community. In reflecting upon my school and church connectedness, a particular image came to mind. Join me in visualizing the elements of this moment, as I often have my students do while reading a story. The setting is a warm, lively parish hall. The characters are children and adults, students and parishioners that span the ages, engaging one another in chatter and laughter. The main idea is bread baking. The air is filled with the aroma of the freshly baked loaves, as small and large hands squeeze, press, and knead mounds of dough. The theme is compassion for those less fortunate. All of these characters had one goal in mind, to help others in need by serving their community. This is a vivid moment in time for me that epitomized the connectedness in this building and solidified my faith in this church and school. My husband, Chris, my boys, Tanner, Brady, and Nolan, we are all so grateful for what we have found here, a church and school family. Since then, my experiences here have been filled with a myriad of connections, singing in the choir every Sunday, to leading morning assembly songs throughout the school week, watching fifth graders present their community service projects to participating in outreach programs here at the church. And I don't think it was coincidental when Scott Christian and I two St. James parishioners who had never met, crossed paths at the most opportune time to team up and pilot the second grade, a school and church connection that I will always cherish. And lastly, one especially poignant connection that I recently made, a second grader openly praying in my class morning meeting, Dear God, I know you are with us in hard times and in good times. I pray that we will keep you in our hearts. When questioned by her astounded classmates, how did you do that? This child responded, I just say what's in my heart, a phrase I have often heard during my times with teenagers in our St. James youth group. I look forward to seeing what lies ahead. The connections between the church and school ensure a vibrancy and growth that many churches long for, one that we can't afford to let dwindle. It is essential that we value and nourish the relationship between school and church wholeheartedly. The children in this school and parish are not only helping to shape who we are in the present, but they will lead and create the St. James of tomorrow as future parishioners, community members, leaders, and citizens. They will undoubtedly continue to bear 
a positive effect on St. James Church and School in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Several years ago, our faculty and staff participated in a retreat before the start of the school year at Verdun Adventure Bound. Our time there was a chance for us to work with one another in small groups with challenges, games, and low ropes. The afternoon introduced a select number of high ropes elements for those brave enough. For you adventurous types, you know what one of these is. It's a carabiner, a vital piece of equipment for climbing and it's essential to keep climbers and rope users safe and secure. We use something like this, actually it was a little sturdier, um, to stay connected and safe while climbing that day. I think these carabiners really represent what we are as a community. Without this carabiner, we could not climb. Without our connection, we wouldn't be here today. Through the years as we have grown, our over 30-year-old preschool to a preschool and elementary school, the support and connectivity of the church is what has allowed us to soar. We have climbed together as a community, holding one another up, making each other stronger along the way. The vestry and the school board have continued to work together strategically, and I truly feel that the relationship of church and school is stronger than ever before. And I thank each of you for that. When we added our first fifth grade class, we felt it was important for them to experience the support and leadership that can be found when building up one another and participating in a low and high ropes course. It's now the class annual field fall retreat, and over the last three years, we've witnessed some pretty remarkable results. The students use the phrase, on belay, the traditional verbal agreement used by climbers to signal the start of a new challenge and a shared responsibility. In other words, are you ready to belay me? When the belayer says, belay on, he or she tells the climber the rope is secure and that the belayer will keep them safe. Seeing fifth graders take on these roles brings a sense of confidence in one another and most importantly, in themselves. Sure, there have been times when they might not have made it to the top, but it's not without a sense of accomplishment. The encouragement from fellow students, some who they've known since they were three years old, allowed them to go higher each time. They weren't afraid to fail. They tried. And isn't that what we want for our children? To lose this fear of failure and instead inspire them to take a chance, to have confidence, to not always reach some sort of accomplishment, but to have goals. And sometimes, more importantly, focus on the goals of the group. At St. James, we are a community formed on more than just academics. Our virtues instill a foundation from the earliest age that each child is made in the image of God. We share the joy and wonder of God's work and allow students to climb together, giving them a launching pad to take flight. The school could not help these students soar without being securely connected to the church. We recently spoke to two graduates and asked them some questions about their time here at St. James. We asked them, what does it mean to go to an Episcopal school? One student said, to have a church and a school connected together in one place is great because every day we're reminded how nice it is to be nice. Everyone here is just so kind because we talk about being kind. Kindness is everything. The other student stated, going to an Episcopal school means you don't just learn subjects like math. You also learn religion. You learn about bigger things. Your experience is wider. You get perspective. Finally, we asked them what they missed most after graduating. One student said, I miss the people. Everyone here is just so kind. I definitely miss the people. I miss how much everyone cared for me. At my new school, everyone is nice but nice is not the same thing as caring. Here I know everyone really cared about me, and I miss that. What more can we say about the effect that we're having on the young people in our community? Whether you're a member of the church, member of the school family, 
Please don't underestimate the ability we have to shape the young people in our community. As I've mentioned before, we are truly sitting on a gem. And while these carabiners are a metaphor of our connection, these connections don't exist without you. Students, families, parishioners, and friends. We're extremely fortunate to be in this together. And like Lori, I look forward to our future. So if you have a red bag, if you could please stand and go to the app. Were baking 
pies to show appreciation for the teachers. Uh, and they all knew exactly why I was in the building. And some even uh, pulled me aside and said that they were part of the church and that I would love it here. Uh, and then the tour continued as, as Stacy beamed with pride as she showed all the things that were being built up here in this place. Uh, she introduced me to teachers and several uh, talked as, as glowingly about the work that they were doing in the school as their affinity for the church and their participation in the church. And by the end of the tour, we were sold. The kind of dynamic, connected ministry I wanted to be part of. But that was only half the family. We had to go and make sure that our children uh, would have a home here as well. So the next time we visited, we brought them. They had no idea why they were here. Uh, they just figured Dad's in the church business looking at a church. And so we went through. We got another tour. And uh, at one point, uh, Elliot is standing outside the second grade uh, room, knowing that would be his next classroom. Uh, and he runs into Mr. Christian, the second grade math teacher. And he asked Mr. Christian what they did at math today. And, and Mr. Christian uh, they wrote a problem on the board that they solved. And Ellie jumped up and started working on the problem. And uh, Scott complimented him on getting the right answer. And he said, no, I'm not done. I haven't written the proof yet. Uh, starts finishing it up. And they start having this dialogue. And I'm watching uh, Elliot come alive with joy for learning. Uh, and afterwards, Elliot pulls me aside and he says, I got an idea, Dad. He said, I could go to the school, and Laura, they could go to the school. You could work at the church, and Mom would love the living story. <laughs> Already all making connections. And since that time, as a part of this community, as part of the school, as uh, the chaplain, as a, a family blessed to live next door, those, those connections have meant the world to me. They continue to grow and to, to be strengthened. But I also want to talk about the effect that those connections have had on this church. This church is a church that I think is, is unique because of its relationship with the school, because of what it gets from the school. First of all, if we were to be honest, it's certainly not the mission of the school, but the school is the largest driver of the church's growth. This church has grown year after year with different clergy, uh, with different, uh, different leadership, different vestries. But the common thread has been uh, that people come into this community through the school. They fall in love with it. They realize that there is a nurturing and a loving environment here. Uh, and they want to be part of it as much as they can. And they start coming on Sundays. And that loving community that exists, it makes Sunday a unique place as well. 73 Culpepper Street is a place alive with the Spirit of God, with God's love, with God's nurturing care all week. The school informs the church. That's why we had our vestry meeting on Monday. And one of the questions I asked all of the new vestries is we got to know each other, the new uh, vestry members, the ones rolling off. Uh, how did you find your way through these doors? And the number of different journeys was as many as there were people in the room. Uh, but one of the common threads among so many of them uh, was this place took care of my children. Uh, and as it took care of my children, it took care of me, and it took care of my spouse. Uh, we felt loved, and we felt like it was part of a community that we wanted to be part of. We wanted to be nurtured the same way our children were nurtured, and they wanted to come back on Sunday. And I think that it has changed the culture of this church. When you live what you teach, when every day you teach children that they're made in the image of God, that they are loved by God, uh, that they are to care for one another uh, as the same reflection of God's image, you start preaching it and teaching it and being it. When you start the year reading the same passage that we read today, that, uh, that convocation uh, where we start the year by reading the Beatitudes and telling people they are blessed by God and God loves them no matter whether they're at the highs of their lives or the lows, and that they're called to be a blessing to others. It shapes the rest of the dynamic. It shapes all of us. Another gift that the school brings to the church is that we can do more. We can reach farther. Our outreach between the monthly projects that the, 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 the school initiates or that the church initiates and the school grabs hold of, our, our learning starts early. That's a wonderful blend of, of church and school offering up their gifts so that people can be educated. Uh, that image of the race where all of those representatives of the church and school and the community all gather together uh, in a, a beautiful representation of what a town can do when it comes together connected uh, in community uh, is beautiful. Also, I've expressed many times that one of the things that drew me to church growing up, living 20 different places, uh, was that I didn't have grandparents or, or next-door neighbors uh, that, that, that knew me for, for, for generations. Uh, and when I came to church, all of a sudden, I had people of different ages that invested in me. 
that cared about me, that complimented me on my athletic or whatever else I was doing. And the school has those moments where children are learning the wisdom of people that have come before them. They are sharing their joy and, and their innocence and their perspective with others that are generations older from our noon services to the altar guild uh, polishing brass with the fifth graders to the way that there's a familiarity on Sunday morning uh, when their, pa their paths cross or when they sit next to each other in the pews or exchange the peace or hear each other's story. Uh, it's something that shouldn't be taken for granted. And then there's the reach of this community. I've never been part of a church that has a more defined and broad reputation in the community. St. James matters to this community because almost everybody has been touched by it. Whether you worship here, or whether your children went here, or whether you taught here at one point in time, or whether your grandchildren went here, or whether your neighbor can't stop talking about what it's done for their children, Almost everywhere you go, from the soccer fields to the baseball diamonds to town meetings uh, to restaurants, you hear something about St. James. And it allows us the power to be able to be an influence for good in this community like these good places can. It's been remarkable. And as we continue to grow those connections, it will only strengthen and we will only spread farther. Few have been unaffected by St. James. So I reflect on that four years later from that first Skype interview to our visit to every way that, that my family has been connected to your families, to every way that the church has continued to deepen its connection uh, to the school. I can't lose that image of all of those fifth graders or all of those senior high youth group members or all of those teachers or all of those middle school youth group members all holding up one of their own on the leg saying, I've got you. You can do anything because I've got you. And we can do anything because we have each other. Church and school, one. So now I'm going to ask these 10 folks standing here to connect to one another. To show how far we can reach when we bind our lives to each other. So now after church, I want each of you, as you walk out the door, to make sure you take one for every member of your family so that you can remember that you are a critical piece, a critical connection to what we are able to do as a whole. That we can reach new heights. We can not only build this absolutely critical expansion and renovation and open our doors to people who can't currently access it, but we can climb many heights together. I also invite you to look at that carabiner and mark that date on your calendar, April 2nd. That's the day we're going to ask you to join the rest of us and connect as we reach new heights together. Amen.